So the next session promises to be extremely enlightening because the topic that we are dealing with is about kids entertainment and OTT, the right content formula. And we are in conversation with Vineet, Vineet Kanabar, host, storytellers and story sellers. Joined by Deepak Salvi, co-founder and COO Chingari, Shrinik Gandhi, Chief Executive Officer and co-founder White Rivers Media, Rajiv Kumar, VFX Head, Excel Entertainment, Tabasum Modi, Director Victor Tango and Content Head DIY, Saumani Sridhara Paul, Senior Vice President, Hangama Digital Media Entertainment. Over to you, Vinit. Thank you so much. Uh, so glad to be here at the Kids Content Summit and uh, delighted to be hosting this with uh, with leading luminaries from the ecosystem. A uh, big hello to all of you and welcome to the panel. Um, I've got like a bunch of questions um, for you guys and I'm sure you have some very interesting insights um, to add in. Um, I think I want to get started by asking you guys um, something that I mean, COVID has affected all of us, right? The way we do business, the way we, the, there's no segment or sector untouched by it, right? Well, let's get started and I'll start with Shomini. Um, what are your notes on how uh, the kids content space has changed in this sort of pre and post COVID scenario? Um, what are your sort of top line notes that you've seen in terms of behaviors or formats or, or innovation, we can get started there. Uh, Shavani, we start with you. Yeah, hi. Uh, good evening, everybody. Actually, I can see uh, there's a little bit of a delay, but I hope uh, you guys can hear. Um, I think, you know, I mean, the biggest change that I would see, uh, especially when it comes to uh, kids and education, I mean, we're seeing how everything has gone digital. So I think there's such a thin line between education on Zoom and edu education through an OTT app. Uh, and, you know, for someone like us uh, through Hangama Kids, where we've always looked at our content uh, largely as infotainment rather than uh, just pure entertainment. Um, it has been, uh, you know, a bit of a journey. And uh, obviously, I mean, you know, I think parents are getting pretty anxious about the fact that they're already on a device all the time, you know, now should we even allow them to continue to be on devices, you know, trying to learn or go beyond the books in that sense. Um, but I think the fact remains is, uh, you know, education at one time, which used to be called distance learning, uh, has now become the only kind of learning. So, it is possibly our responsibility as all of us as players uh, to look at how can we, you know, keep the anxious parents, uh, you know, calm uh, and enable, uh, you know, content in a way that the child feels, uh, uh, you know, entertained, but the parent also is assured that it's not, uh, you know, unnecessary content or it's not content that's going to mess up with their minds even more. Uh, but yeah, the space has, I mean, of course, we've seen uh, you know, someone like Wood Kids, who's been very, very active. And of course, a lot of the kids channels as well have, you know, there have been new shows that have come up. Uh, but the space is still a little nascent, I would imagine, because uh, most people who have started, uh, you know, uh, adopting OTT have moved more towards uh, the fact that they can't go to theaters and watch their entertainment. So kids are still going to have its you know, long tail journey in that sense. Right. Um, I want to bring Deepak in here and, and get your notes uh, on this. I mean, what I'm hearing from, from so many is that everything's going digital, uh, lines are blurring. What is education? What is infotainment? What is entertainment? Yeah. yeah. So uh, <laughs> I have a daughter who is six years old. Okay. So I haven't spent that much of time when I was working and now work from home, I've spent a lot of time with her. So I've been monitoring what's happening, what she's watching, what kind of content she's doing. So I've worked in a kid's channel before in an international uh, channel, basically. So the kind of content over there and the kind of content we have, it's more of like they, are, they have a very infotainment content, which I would love her to see. It. But the kind of content which we have on our television channels or... I haven't seen much OTT, but, uh, 
but the content is more of a filmy dubbing you know voices and this thing and the kind of reaction which kids have so right now whatever she watches when she goes with her uh, uh, friends she uses that language so we are we have to be very particular and there is as uh, as uh, said before there is a big opportunity i would love to pay for a content which my daughter will learn something new new manners or the way people respect take something out of it so that is very important content and initially we used to say yaar mat dekho mat dekho abhi they are whole day on their she i got i bought a ipad for her for her school she is whole day on it and we don't have a control since my wife is busy on her stuff i am busy on my stuff but that's why if i give her like a good ott if i have a good ott platform which i can say yaar ye content acha hai she it will be helpful i don't mind spending her like 2 hours on that uh, uh, ott platform and right now i think so it's missing for sure um your thoughts uh, shrini tabasum um, i mean while we round off the the opening segment what we are hearing is that um things are changing and things are yeah. complex but love to get your thoughts so so uh, firstly i think this is a very very big uh, segment uh, kids as a segment i think it's about 15% of country's active internet audience right it is humongous right in fact i was uh, reading this uh, research by cantar uh, uh, along with ycom 18 which said that about 87% of indian parents agree that mobile helps immensely for their kids learning and almost equal amount of you know uh, equal percentage of parents also agreed you know and this fact has changed post covid that uh, mobile in fact helps them learn faster than a book so i think uh, if if we were to take all the learnings i think this for me especially uh, this is one of the biggest learnings out of covid that you know parents have started adopting to the fact that one can learn with the phone Right. right so so you know they are uh, you know while they've been digitally native i think they're becoming all the more digitally uh, habituated which so, is a great thing right uh, yeah, tabasum sure. uh, want to bring you in here yeah so i would say you know just user behavior pre pandemic and post pandemic pre pandemic everybody thought tech was displacing the kid from doing something better something physical something skill based but now screen is the vehicle for everything so even parents have understood it as not all screen time is equal screen time so when you're attending school when you're watching you're doing a school based project or when you're watching a family uh, entertainment or movie that's not that cannot be counted as the kids personal screen time the screen time needs to be separate uh, and yes there i mean we we still lack good opportunities in india for good screen time for kids and uh, what we also need to understand is the audience that we're talking about is not a uh, native indian content consumers only these kids are actually consuming content across the globe so they are not uh, alien to the fact that there is some fantastic show out there which is probably american and they are watching it here so i think uh, compared to adults or even young adults who are who are consuming a lot of local content kids today are, co- are consuming a lot of international content also so they know how to differentiate good and bad content let me ask you this and it's a very interesting point uh, that that's emerging from uh, what all of you said uh, and i'm going to throw it to deepak because we haven't heard him uh, so far but kids um, now have dedicated screen time right it's some it's an opportunity that we must program for no more is it just animated stuff going on cartoon network or or chota bheem or or wherever else right the tastes and choices have evolved very very quickly have you seen any such innovations in the content space that caught your eye that says hey this is a brand new way of um, of serving the kids a specific screen time uh, deepak i'd love to get your thoughts yeah so uh, in between i've been watching so i spend like one hour in the evening with my daughter to watch content so i want to understand what she's watching and there are few shows which is very international which i saw on amazon kicks so my daughter wants to be a football player now she saw that the content and said i want to be a football player and she started like she pressurized me to get a football and she started going down and playing football with the kids so this kind of content will work in india actually if we make it we have very like the the skate girl which i i guess i forgot the name of the movie recently i saw so she was like are ha this is good you know the kind Netflix of flicks film that came out yeah uh, physical activity more right. than you know watching whole day like ha isne ye bola isne wo bola it's not so there should be something out of it got it And let me bring fact, yeah go go please finish finish so internationally i stayed for few years of so what i understood over there they prepare their kids for next whatever they want to do what what kind of choices they have instead of right. you know just entertainment 
and we shouldn't because we are creating the next generation whatever so whatever we serve right now to them they will act on it and they will grow on it so whatever you want to put right now make it like a productive kind of thing instead of you know diy i'm just seeing this example of multiple genres but there'll be a story there there is good content happening in india also but it's not getting highlighted right now i what i feel so right um rajiv i want to bring you in um and get your thoughts on why do you think that's that that's not happening i mean um like we've heard there are examples of indian content international content um but what kind of thrust does this space need for for those to get highlighted and to be useful uh, not just entertaining but also useful to our kids and in their future uh i would say uh, uh, a lot has been thought of earlier as well and uh, today as well uh, while listening to all the panelists over here uh, uh, there is there's a lot that is happening already what constraint i think is that everyone wants to attempt it but the right kind of content the right kind of uh, uh, medium and especially after pandemic where we know now that the the, the kids are uh, online they are watching the content they have they, they have seen the pattern how it works so now the focus has to be more on the content more on the uh, educative uh, infotainment where the people and the parents and the kids both are, all of them are attracted towards it and where there then there is a kind of a i would say uh you will start relating to indian superheroes as well it's always that okay there is a doraemon there is something else there is something else but hardly there is any indian superhero which is visible so this is the right time i would say that last year has taught us a lot many things and a new wave has created all this and emerging the digital as an emerging media for the kids especially i would say uh the learning starts right from preschool and most of the preschools are now online so that's where i think the the content the ott and the medium of digital has already started right um i have actually two very separate questions that that popped into my head when you talked about this right um i want to talk about the first one which is which seems to me like an opportunity like you said um schooling has changed it's on all online um if you look at online teaching models in in korea or or in in china they look and feel very different very evolved very content forward in that sense right while we're still teacher dependent we're still sort of taking what was the offline curriculum and putting it online and expecting it to work work the same way are, are you all looking at that as an opportunity and again it's, it's an, an open question but do you think that's an opportunity uh, per se um, for for us i would say definitely that's an opportunity because uh, see again uh, while the digital has opened up a lot many doors uh, if especially if you look at the vfx oriented films uh, the market has evolved what we were doing 10 years back is now not the same market we have evolved with the technology with the kind of visuals the similar pattern has to be for the uh, kids when it comes to the content right now we need to make the parents first habitual of that content the kids needs to get uh, synced with the otts where digital uh, like uh, there was some said that the there's a there's a screen time which is which needs to be useful enough now to bring the knowledge to them and to make that medium as a powerful medium for a learning right i so have a point uh, uh, yeah so uh, you know i mean i think when it comes to content you know the, it, it's so, it's so subjective and when when we look at ourselves the way we went into the kids space uh you know we we started with a youtube channel and then we kind of went into trying to build it as an ott uh you know uh, destination and uh, we realized on youtube we were way behind from most of the players you know you had chuchu tv you had raj shree you had so many other players who were and then you had regional players as well i think you know first of all one has to look at how can you create a positioning which is different from what the others are doing uh, you can't try to match up with them uh, with everyone especially in terms of production quality if you cannot you know it's like i think one of the biggest reasons uh, indian uh, you know cartoon films have not done that well is because one for some reason i feel they speak down to the children you look at some of the walt disney movies i mean movies like wall e or up they are so philosophical you know there's so much i mean even a even an adult would watch i'm a big fan of animated films you know so uh, 
yeah so for me it, it really makes a lot of difference but very few i mean i think of course uh, you know with chota bhim they've managed to do something uh, you know which is fun it's young and yet there there's some interesting takeaway uh, from i believe your you know your content has to be more in terms of what are you trying to communicate first i think that is a very critical part uh, before you try to look at how do you communicate because i think today you can get away i mean you know i, I i'm i'm sorry i think there's someone here from chingari right uh, do we have a person here who's representing chingari uh, so i mean just to give you an example of when you look at short form video platforms today right i don't think it's at, at all about the production quality it's about what that uh content is about and one can uh i'm not saying get away with murder but i think if you've got your philosophy and uh you know what you're trying to communicate in place first um you can you know look at a simpler way it can be 2d animation it can be infographics it can be just be motion graphics or it can be just script driven you know uh, it's as simple as that um uh, so you know i mean that's that's the way i look at uh, how one can look at also building uh, the kids space and i see most of the players today focusing largely till the age group of 8 and 9 uh, but if you are able to look at kids today i would say even your 13 to 18 year old are kids they're so confused they don't know what they want they don't know how to get it but they feel that they know it all you know so they also need a certain kind of uh, hand holding i would believe Yeah, I, uh, I totally agree with uh, Shamini. The tween segment is, I think, something that everybody has just completely ignored, and it's such a big opportunity area. And even if, uh, Vinit, if we come back to the thought that you had about educational content being an opportunity area, it's it is so big that no one has really been able to crack it right. Whether you look at, uh, you know, formats like interactive video, or you look at learning by doing, you look at there are just so many things out there. all waiting to be explored so huge opportunity areas all of them i think i wanted to spend I, a sec sorry uh, shanik i think you heard sorry i have a completely parallel point i think uh, which is a huge opportunity uh, alongside education for kids i think animated content for emotional and ethical development of kids uh, could be a very very big segment right yes. think of it uh, right uh, the way disney um, you know uh, disney makes uh, content so you know from timeless messages of love family acceptance failures right the way beautifully them you know kind of showcase these things via their content i think that in itself is a huge opportunity and uh, a lot of things can be co curated or curated specially for india right so uh, that and and uh, who who says that school education only has to be books right one can also teach emotional development to kids right i think accepting failures as a subject in itself can be a very big subject for sure i think there's the opportunity is is massive no matter what the subject matter is uh, the fact that the delivery pipeline has changed means the entire opportunity has shifted forward right no more is it dora the explorer saying where is it find it on the screen with fake interactivity you can actually have second screen behaviors built into whatever you're trying to do right um i want to turn this conversation into two areas that according to me and again um I'm an outsider. You're the expert, so I'd love to hear uh, your thoughts here. To me, there are two areas which are both threats and uh, could be places which are actually hand in glove with with education. These two areas, to me, are are YouTube. I mean, the largest catchment area for anybody. I've got a I've got a eight year old uh, nephew at home, and he learns words that I did not imagine myself knowing at eight years old. Right? Like, and he gets it from Minecraft. He's watching Minecraft videos. He's getting it from slime videos or somewhere else, right? So YouTube has become sort of a de facto education channel, right? And the second space is gaming, right? And we talked about interactivity a little bit before, but the way these kids are learning now, whether it is uh, you know young kids or whether it is the teens, interactivity is sort of part of their language of learning, right? How how is how are players in the space looking at these two are, are they considered threats are they considered um, inspiration are they considered the future i'd love to get get your thoughts and i'll start with tabasu on this one so interactivity is just the new way kids consume content so we have to be interactive there is no more passive content consumption especially as far as kids are concerned so uh, 
and honestly gaming can really teach you a lot of things if it is done the right way if it is done with the right limits and uh, the right kind of games are played i think gaming can really teach you a lot as far as youtube is concerned just if you look at good quality or well produced content and the not so well produced content because the percentage of the latter is so high and it's just fed to the consumers based is based on algorithm uh i don't really think that's the best way to consume content i wouldn't want my kids to be consuming content that way just because uh you know some algorithm is choosing what they should be watching so i i think uh, curated content is the way to go even if you actually look at youtube kids uh, which is a kids specific platform i still think it's uh, it's not really doing its job well uh, as as much as it's not meeting the opportunity that there is uh but i think yeah gaming definitely can teach kids a lot and coming back to what shrenik was also speaking about uh, you know teaching values teaching things like uh, uh, you know team spirit or uh, sportsmanship or learning to learning to accept loss uh, or you know accepting losing at a game so so various things like that actually you get to learn through gaming and not just gaming if you look at the whole idea of learning by doing if you look at any kind of uh, like the content we make at diy is all about teaching kids um, different skills and for every minute of content that you're consuming on the platform there are enough challenges to make you go offline and actually apply that learning so these are things that actually parents appreciate and are looking forward for their kids and as i love to get get other thoughts in on on youtube and gaming i think um like i said to me they are the biggest uh, threats or the biggest leading indicators of where the space is going so yeah rajiv uh, your thoughts on this please i would say that uh, uh, while we have the threats there are also the opportunities uh, youtube especially the way tabasun uh, explained that there are a lot of opportunities that needs to be explored and they are not being utilized properly uh, first uh, over the past one year most of the parents have understood the patterns uh, and uh, if the if the if the presence against the screen or the content whatever is there uh, if it is viable or not viable whether this whether the kid is being able to make his presence understand the content so all that pattern is already there now it's all about communicating it right it's all about where we are focusing and what kind of uh, uh uh what kind of understanding is coming across with the content so i would take that as an opportunity uh, threats of course we we see like how pubg has impacted a lot many youngsters so that was a biggest threat so uh, more than threat opportunity is always a focus Absolutely. yeah i i feel actually that there is a place for everybody you know uh, I, i think the point that tabasum made about even youtube kids in spite of it being called kids not really uh, i think the biggest gap there is the age appropriateness you know uh, i remember when my son was 10 and was he's all, he's still uh, you know he's 14 and he's still hooked on to youtube but he's also a gamer and now he watches games on youtube so uh, you know there's always going to be those challenges but i think at the end of the day uh, the biggest opportunity that i see today which even i feel you know as a as a business we need to tap very strongly is the regional side of things because uh, you know like right now for example our content has been largely english and i have taken time to try and make it you know tamil centric or a uh, punjabi centric or malayalam centric but i think that is that ideally should be the next step especially if you are an ott player in the kids space you know and and someone who's like we see a lot of ott players that are acquiring content from television or youtube but if you are somebody who's creating content from scratch then i think you have the opportunity to give it any kind of direction you know gaming of course is a um, is a different giant altogether and uh one will have to see whether they can allocate or, or you know get some time from the child for something that you're doing which may not be gaming so it it's it's a good competitive landscape i would believe wonderful um i want to ask you and, and you've all pointed out certain challenges in this space right and to me there are a few challenges that 
um, are universal from both as as parents and as as business people, right? Um, content safety is is one of them, especially with uh, sort of non-linear delivery with YouTube or Facebook or or, or other places. Um, age-appropriate content, like I said, <clears throat> um, the downstream impact of consuming that content is does it have the right ethics, values, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, how are you? I mean, at your companies looking at solving for this and, and what are um, sort of buzzwords or guidelines that, that you're putting in place uh, to guide this going forward? I'd love to get, get some thoughts from Shainiki. Uh, me? Yeah, so, uh, well, we, sorry. No, uh, go on, please go on. Okay. Uh, so we've actually taken a very uh, tactical approach on it because uh, like I said, when we decided to launch our platform, we had to look at how are we going to be different. So our biggest difference was that we cater to kids from zero to 18 years, but broken into five age groups. So there's content for zero to two, two to five, five to 10, 10 to 13 and 30 to 18. And then we also have content for parents from a kid's perspective. How do you deal with your child in different situations? Uh, the core uh, other philosophy in terms of content, they're all short form. So even though we have original bedtime stories, the maximum duration will be about six to seven minutes. You know, so the intent has always been, so even from the app or the website, when you access, as you enter, you can decide which age group do you want to enter into and you will see content accordingly. So that's the kind of, I would say, age appropriateness that we've tried to keep. It, it doesn't stop you from going into other areas, but at least the entry point has been kind of guided in that sense. As a parent, I was extremely critical on this point that the content has to be, and I'm, thankfully even the app stores today are very, I mean, the number of times we've been rejected by iOS is not funny, you know, and they'll come back with all sorts of little, little minute things. So there's been a lot, I think the diligence is super high when it comes to kids anyway. Uh, but it's great. I think it's time because there's so much of nonsense going on in the world. The kind of games these kids play, you cannot stop them. So you're know, somewhere as, players in the industry, we've got to take that responsibility. Right. Um, I'd love to get a, a producer side thought from, from you guys as well. Nishanik, uh, so, maybe you can- so I can give you a marketeer side thought. Yeah, marketeer side thought. Sure. Yeah. So, so uh, we work with a lot of brands and uh, I think one of the latest buzzword, uh, which I've been listening is supervised mod. Uh, rather than you know a, a simple parent uh, you know parent controlled viewing so i think if you i'm sure you know uh, youtube recently launched a supervised mode for uh, pa you know parent control view viewing where you know you can actually get a kid to you know you can get a parent to supervise what a kid is watching right um, uh, there there are multiple other uh, safety you know uh, features um, across platforms like a kid safety pin feature right so you know you will not be allowed to watch content at a certain hour Right. So those are the things I think needs to be considered. And I think those are the things one needs to encourage because, um, you know, right. Uh, right. I think Tapasum rightly mentioned uh, uh, the, the kind we can't have a child's education controlled by an algorithm. Right. So, so it has to be a good mix. Right. Uh, so even a parent has to be equally involved in, um, you know, every minute uh, or maybe every hour a child is, you know, investing in watching some content. So uh, I think that that's, that's one of the things which one needs to work on. Uh, the, problem is, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. the problem is, sorry, sorry, the problem is, I understand I've been trying to, you know, take my daughter off from YouTube because the kind of content I, I whatever she said is perfect. The kind of content we, we don't have control over it is not the norm where you sending content to them. So we don't know. That's why I made, made sure that she watched certain OTT apps only. So that can, and even parents are, right now, we, you know, we understand we are, like, we are from content space. We understand we are, ha, ye dikha na, ye nahi dikha na. But the other parents who are not from a content space, they don't have time for it. Right now, the main problem with parents is they don't have time. Right. And they can't monitor. So that's what, if there's, I still, there are good stories in India. If uh, we have good content, but we have to produce that and someone has to take that lead and, you know, produce that content and can they make it happen. Basically. I want to ask you something uh, yeah. from an app perspective, actually, Deepak. Uh, can, yeah. can you hear me? Is it, am, am I audible? Yeah, yeah. yeah. My, my internet's a little uh, fluctuating, I think. Uh, but from a Shingari perspective, right? How are you guys keeping these concerns in mind? Because these apps are, again, like you said, your daughter has an iPad. She's free to download whatever she likes. Um, 
and and these concerns stay no matter which uh, delivery platform or which uh, yeah. app you are you are consuming so from a chingari perspective how are you guys sort of solving for this so there are two ways uh, we monitor each and each video content maybe it can uh, uh, make a kind of uh, algorithm wise and we have manual screening also so that's how we are screening every content which is going on our time like basically the feed so this is how we are tackling it, tackling it and i come from a bbc background i worked on cvbs bbc so the kind of uh, their uh, what we call compliances are we are trying to follow that so there's nothing you know uh, and we are very particular of what kind of content will go how it will affect the kids and because we are catering to little older you know audience like 13 to 18 kind of or 18 right. to 30 so we are very particular about what's going on our feed so there are two ways of moderating one is like a a uh, kind of uh, algorithm which is monitoring and the manual moderation is also there one well that's that's great to know um i know we're we're about the end of this so i'm going to turn back this whole thing into what is the title of our panel and ask you very pointedly what is the right formula right i want um i want short snappy answers Just think of this as I do a, a segment on my podcast called Water with Vinny. So think of it like like that kind of rapid fire segment. But yeah, um, let me let me get this started um, with Rajiv. Right? What is according to you um, the right formula now? Now for the next maybe ten fifteen years that we are seeing technology, gaming, uh, animated content, values, ethics, education. It's it's such a mouthful to talk about, yeah. right? Um, yeah. And then picking out of that, um, how do you get to that right formula? And what, according to you, are the levers of that right formula? Uh, I would say that uh, it's a blend of uh, most of the elements what you mentioned, uh, like how the film market has evolved uh, after years, and we've cracked the formula of low budget films, high budget films, mega 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 films. This is. this is also a, a kind of genre that needs to be explored there is always a perception if, even from the production side when i say from the producers and that there is a lot of uh, the thought that uh, animated content is an expensive content so most of the people who want to attempt even they are not likely to attempt the people want to see the stories but because a perception is that it's a it's a expensive content they they're not finding it right they're not mm-hmm. going to attempt also so i think the uh, the kind of media which has evolved now which is a digital there will be a lot which will come across and uh, a blend of a story content animation cost everything has to be taken care that's the right formula where the content will also work and of course the audience is always there that there's a huge market in india right wonderful i'm going to toss this over to shrenik from a marketer's perspective i'm going to throw in and extra googly in there is merchandising still a big part of uh, the formula or or is that something that's gone gone something sometime in the past your thoughts please no no uh, so i think i had a answer similar on similar lines uh, one one of the magic formulas i believe uh, for kids content as a segment is uh, creating a lot of localized characters uh, which has deep connection with our culture right uh while of course we need to you know we uh, we need to keep evolving the culture it um, you know one need not necessarily follow the age old practices but one has to evolve you know a lot of things which are happening in the culture and those things needs to be implemented using the right kids content right so i think that's point number 1 and that brings me to the another point which will answer your merchandising uh, you know as a business uh, creating an entire ecosystem for kids right so um, it doesn't end at content right it i think uh, i think the whole journey starts with content right so you know how do how do you how do you take you know the content which is there to actual life of the kid right going all the way up to there right so i i think if if one can you know have pure digital only products physical only products and digital products a good mix of all of these three wonderful um tabasum i want to bring you in for your uh, closing notes and tell us your secret formula for kids content So yeah, I mean, as far as secret formula is concerned, we believe in making kids do what they learn. So a lot of the it's very action oriented. Everything that you watch, you need to go out and actually do it. Come back and show us what you've done. So there's a lot of peer to peer learning. There's community. There is uh, if kids feed off each other's energies really well. So that is something that uh, we believe as as our formula of content creation. but overall i feel it's the time for us to have more ip in the kids space uh it's 
I think we've overdone the whole acquisition and dubbing and all of that. We've seen too much of that. Uh, we have good storytellers in this country. We have great technical expertise in this country. Uh, we really need to have our own iconic shows. I think that is something that I would like to, that would be my closing notes on this. Wonderful. I'm, I'm looking forward to, to that on the screen. As much as I love my dubbed versions of Dexter from my childhood, I would love to see something that is more yeah, native to India come out. We can have a Dexter of our own, right? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Right. Um, Rajiv, you're not. Uh, uh, Deepak, you're not. I'm so sorry. So, uh, basically, uh, what I look for is good content. We, as Sabasun said, we have stories. We need to execute them properly. Uh, I remember when I, I did uh, ACK Heroes animated version, that was the first animated version we did. So that kind of stuff I worked on and I was very happy that uh, what we were reading comic book, it's becoming animated with a voice and everything. So kids are very interact. So these, I am, that is only a treatment, but we have good stories. We want to work on it. I, I know kids will accept it and even the parents will accept it. So at least that, uh, even what I believe is if I put hundred rupees, I will put 100 rupees for a good content. I don't mind buying that content. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Wonderful. And last but not least, uh, Shumini, your closing notes for us. Um, I'm looking for what is the right formula for kids' content from you? Um, I think uh, I wouldn't single out content as the only uh, strategy. Uh, I would want to look at how can I keep this as something which maybe 10 years down the line still exists. Uh, you know, we, we hear of so many platforms and brands coming and going. Uh, so prudency is something which I think is, uh, is vital. Um, and if you can, you know, if you can continue to sustain and create content with it being uh, impactful and, you know, people being able to get some takeaway from it, every time they come back and experience that content. I think that is going to be the core formula. You've got to be able to find uh, ways. And, you know, for in our case, for example, it is a subscription based app. So the more we see the subscriptions, you know, either people coming back and subscribing or new people coming in, but that's going to be a big play. And of course, how can we keep evolving the platform, you know, uh, and I'm not in this race that abhi sab kuch ho hai, my product has to have it all because, you know, we all know thinking about it is quick and easy, but actually getting it developed and putting it out there is a journey, right? So uh, I think the aim is to just make sure that we are able to keep ourselves constantly evolving, staying engaged, uh, looking at how we can engage with every subscriber that is coming onto the platform. Uh, and I am a strong believer in collaborations, you know, uh, of, of, of all kinds. So looking at like-minded people who can help, like uh, Shenik said, you know, the ecosystem needs to be built so that people look at the kids' space, not just as, Acha, you know, in ke parents se paisa mil sakta hai, but more on, are we playing, is there a purpose behind what we're trying to do? I think that is a, that is what uh, has to be the agenda. Wonderful. Um, I really want to get one last question in um, before I let you guys go. Um, and that's, I want you to give us one show, a one IP um, that you think is really inspirational, that you think could be the touchstone of what we can, what we can develop. I, I want it to be really short and snappy uh, because I know we're out of time and um, yeah. So one IP from, from you guys that we should check out as uh, an indicator for the future of kids content. Uh, Tabasum, we go with you. Uh, for me, I think Sesame Street has always been that IP that I've always looked up to and uh, admired because it's, it's, it's so old and it's still so relevant. And uh, with all the iterations that has had, it has had globally, it uh, still stays true to its purpose. And yeah, I'd like to make a show like that someday. More Elmo and Big Bird for us. Uh, <laughs> over to you, Raj. Tom and Jerry, the classic example, it's still you. going, it's still going. And I think it's a huge, it, it has a huge potential to come across franchising with multiple other ventures with making your own Indianized content out of it a lot. Did, did you watch the live action movie that came out? Yes, Chloe I did. Yes, wonderful, yes. that was. It's Absolutely. so wonderful. Yes. Yeah. Um, over to you, Shani. Uh, I think Mythbusters uh, Junior, uh, if the same is adapted to India, I think it will have tremendous potential. Wonderful. Deepak? 
I'll go for any show in on CBBS right now. I uh, I haven't watched uh, the bigger shows right now, but mm-hmm. for me right now, CBBS any content which is very learning and very informative and the kind of production values they have is good. Fantastic. And finally, Shami. Uh, I think you know the the older Walt Disney movies that used to be actually done with you know by hand and not all your uh, you know the CGI and all of that. Uh, yeah. You still watch Snow White and you know even uh, the Fox and the Hound and all of these kind of movies. They're still so beautiful. You see the expressions. You see. I think that's something. But if I was to look at a particular IP, I feel from an Indian perspective, I I think Chota Bhim has really done a great job, and they continue to sustain. So yeah, I mean hats off to them. They they are a good example of how you keep evolving. Wonderful. Thank you so much for your insights and for sharing uh, the IPs that you find valuable. I think it was a super um, informative and super insightful session. Um, thank you for joining us. Thank you to the Kids Content Summit for having us. I think. Thank you, guys. I hope you thank had you. some fun. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you.